Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the void. I'm player one, and welcome back to Dungeon Rumba. We're still here. We've been here for so long, and we're still not done. We still got. I think like uh, I think this ends at day 50, so we got at least until then, and we still have to um, max out three more people. So let's just go. Let's let's see. Can I make anything? Oh yes, I can. Wow. Bubble. Now who should get that? Oh, Toko's about to max out her cleaning. Ooh. All right. You know, I don't, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm getting any more. So I'm just gonna have people go wherever. Let's just hope I don't mess up the cleaning. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think with having so many... Well, not so many, but a few people with like basically maxed cleaning, I don't even need that many people to do it. I only need like two. So that definitely helps. All right. Hello. Junko in quotations. Let us hang out. Now, I think if I remember correctly, we don't have that much stuff for her. Well, we don't have her best things, so I have to figure out moderate things to give to her. What would she like? Emergency ration. Let's go. Hey, Makoto, can I tell you something? I mean, you and you alone. Just me? What is it? Yeah. My true intentions. Oh? Huh? To be honest, I'm kind of fed up with all this. We're all ultimates, right? So we get carried away and rush face first into stuff. Even I have to wonder if it's okay to live like that. Are you thinking of quitting modeling or something? Dreams are meant to change as you grow up, right? Depending on where you're at, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high, high school... What can we do? But I've had the same dream since I was a little kid, and I've been rushing toward it ever since. So I've never really had to think all that hard about my dreams. But what's wrong with that? It just means you still feel the same way about it, right? Yeah. That's what I used to think. But if it doesn't change, your possibilities can't grow, right? That's how no new opportunities are born. And up until now, I never did that. I never let my dreams grow. All I saw was that one dream. I put everything I had into that one narrow little world. I feel like there's so much more I could be doing that I'm not, and I don't like that feeling. So I think I'm going to start looking for it. Is it childish of me to think like that? Am I just being a baby? No, not at all. I'm the same way. I'm still trying to figure out what it is I want to do. And sometimes I feel like I'll never find it. I feel like maybe I'll spend the rest of my life looking for it. But I'm not sure it's even about finding it or not finding it. Maybe the important thing is that you're looking for it. Makoto, you... You actually sounded kind of cool just now. No, that's not what I was trying to... Yeah. Well, you could be right. Totally. Getting lost can be a good thing. As long as you're looking for it, maybe that's enough to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Let me remember what you said. Thanks, Makoto. Sure. 
In return, I promise that if I do decide to kill someone, it won't be you. Don't say scary stuff like that. Huh. Seriously? But before I can do what you said, I gotta get out of here first. So I'm definitely gonna find out how to get out. Huh. And I think I think that was it, because he said the whole truest sense of the of the word that we're friends. That was very interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, hero? Was is that it? Yeah. Huh. Only three. Man. Mukuro is so very interesting and I just wished I I just wish we actually got more of her. Ha huh. sad. Well we're we're getting close. We're almost we're almost there. We're so close. We have two more. And there we are. Man, all those people, we only got one of each of the ones I was looking for. This... Hmm. Alright, well... Looking back on the order we decided before... It looks like Hifumi is next. Joy. Man, I've... I've never even done a Hifumi voice. I don't know how this is going to sound. Let's see, what is he like? He likes book. Makes sense. All right, let's see how this goes. <clears throat> I see. Quality in you, Mr. Nagi. True quality. And that's why I've decided to present to you my lecture on the nature of fan fiction. If we're going to be friends, you must be fully informed. I will permit no fanfic bigotry whatsoever. I don't think I have any fanfic bigotry. I mean, I don't really know anything about that kind of geeky stuff anyway. See, there it is. To you, fanfic equals geeky, right? But is that all that word is worth? Did I say something wrong? But that's okay. Because I take the word geek as a compliment. For you see, there is nobody on earth so full of knowledge as a geek. Yes, indeed. In a sense, a geek is like an expert. That's right, a total expert. A successful musician must necessarily be a music geek. A good movie director is a movie geek. You see? It's those experts, those geeks, who open up the world to others. So when you say that writing fanfic is geeky, you're recognizing us as true experts. Okay. Some. Um, what exactly is fanfic then? It's 
super direct question for the win. Mm -hmm. Basically, we all have all different kinds of stores and events, right? These are where groups of holy warriors sell their own stuff based on games, comics, anime, everything. And the stuff those people make is fanfic. <laughs> comics are the most common creation, but it also includes games, music, and even merchandise. By the way, there's a name for when a group of fanfic creators come together. Specifically, it's any organized group that comes together to release their work. Uh... Circle? It sure is. Of course you knew that. I mean, it's only common sense. I certainly hope you don't expect me to explain such common sense topics every time. Well, like I said, I don't know too much about this stuff. This goes well beyond I don't know too much. But I guess I can't blame you. The propaganda never touches on that, so as a fanfic ambassador, by the time I'm done with you, you'll be itching to buy a premium pass to the next fanfic con. Right? Obviously, he's excited, but... That's it for today. I hope you're excited for your next lesson. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for the two of us. Uh, that's... Great, Ifumi. So... So good to hang out with you. That voice hurts me. That does that does kind of tire my, my vocal cords a little bit. Great. Ugh. And I still need a pen light. Okay. Everyone just just go again. Now, seeing as how he lasted for quite a good bit, I expect there to be quite a number of these. Ugh. Surprisingly, we only got the one cola. So what else? Regular ass chips. Also makes sense. Now then, this time, would you like to learn about one of my many legends? Your legends? Naturally, you don't become the ultimate fanfic creator without a few legends sprouting up around you. One such legend is how in middle school, I was able to convince the school to create a fanfic club. And from that day, I exposed myself and my fanfic to the world at large. Why? Why did you say it like that? God damn it, you weird man. <sighs> By the way, do you happen to know what all my work is based on? Sorry, no idea. Well, surely you've heard of the highly acclaimed enemy Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess. Now, you might think that sounds totally cliche, but you would be wrong. I didn't simply copy the Pretty Girl Princess Pickle style, I took a total metal sci-fi approach. My perspective was seen as quite odd, of course, but if you really look at what I was doing, my version of Princess Pickles was the total antithesis of the new wave sci-fi movement. In fact, it was my response to J.G. Ballard's speculative fiction stylings. Ah, <laughs> uh, my geekdom is leaking out again, I apologize. Anyway, unlike most fans, I never saw Princess Piggles as your typical moe anime. Yeah, I definitely got that impression. But I can't believe you're able to single-handedly persuade the school to let you make a club. Oh, that's because I bribed them with a cut of my profits. Profits? And I've only gotten better at it. I'm blowing up. 
Now then, up until now, I've always focused on taking part in Princess Pickle's single setting events. Single setting? It's when a circle gets together to come up with a project or event focused on only one show or series. So a Princess Pickle's single setting event would only allow works involving Princess Pickle, see? On the flip side, if there's no restriction on the number of properties, do you know what that's called? A... Referral? That's absolutely right. There are actually plenty of free-for-all events every year, and yet... More and more slackers are showing up with no idea what fanfic really means. It's so annoying! So in order to crush these peons with all my might, I'm going to start taking part in more free-for-alls. Crush them? That doesn't sound very friendly. I don't participate in the events to make friends, and I cannot forgive these lazy bastards! I don't tell me to ignore them. If you let some little wimp survive, you'll regret it later. Play any RPG with the level with the villain spares the hero when he's level one, and what happens? Boom, dead. I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. It's a doggy dog industry where only the most brutal survive. Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna start you off easy by getting you involved in some simple cosplay action. I'm gonna get involved. Wait, did you say cosplay? You're a pretty good looking guy. If your costume was decent enough, I might even let you work my booth. I bet you could even net yourself a magical girl hair, huh? So with that in mind, let's change the world of fanfic together. What does that even mean? Oh, lord. What kind of costume would he get Makoto in? I don't want to imagine. I don't want to imagine. Nope. Warlock Kuma. Alright, let's see here. A uh, no. Yeah, I think I can only about make the last one here. So I just need the one pen lights. All those people, I got who? At least Hero and Ifumi leveled up. Alright, you big bastard. What else does he like? Oh wait, isn't did we get one? Cuz I know there's there's one thing that he definitely likes. I'm just wondering if yep, there she is. <sighs> Makoto. What's wrong, Yufumi? It hurts. What hurts? Are you okay? You're really sweaty. I'll go get you some medicine. Wait, what kind of medicine do you need? Coke. Huh? Coke! Diet Coke! Bring me some Diet Coke right now! He just pulled a total 180. But I don't think I've seen any Diet Coke here in the school. I, I know. I've looked all over. And now I'm going through Diet Coke withdrawal! Withdrawal? If only I'd mastered the Hypno-Eye technique. Then I'd take over Monokuma's brain and use him to go get me some Diet Coke. But I never did learn that one. You got lucky this time, Bear. So, uh... I can't take it anymore! I would literally murder everyone here for a can of Diet Coke! Don't say stuff like that. You gotta get through this, man. 
You can say that because you don't understand the glory and splendor of Diet Coke. Diet Coke is a friend to all mankind. A single sip in your body melts like butter. It's the kind of high nothing can match. It clears my mind and even the most boring conversation sounds like a cinematic masterpiece. I knew I was going through withdrawal. Am I hallucinating now? Yeah, away, vile spirits! I cast thee out! Hifumi, calm down. Here come the auditory hallucinations. That voice. Princess Piggles, it's you! Snap out of it, man! The princess told me to snap out of it. You can't let Diet Coke beat you. You're right. I won't lose. I'm a strong boy. I can endure this. For you, my princess. Now let's play tag. Hooray, hooray. Tag, you're it. Squealing like a little girl, Hifumi ran off to who knows where. Um. He's gonna be okay. Right? Yeah. He'll be fine. For sure. No. No, he won't. For, for eons, he will never be alright. Damn, that, that hurt my throat. I, I popped off on that. I don't even know why. Why, why Diet Coke? Why? Ain't that trademarked? Did they get the trademark to say that in the game? I don't even know. Alright, let's go again. This man just makes me tired. For some reason, he likes the unending dandelion. Could not tell you why. Hey, Mr. Nye. Yeah, what's up? I feel like you're worthy of my trust, you know? You're the only one I can confess to. I've reached my limit. I need to get out of here, right now. Hey, come on. Don't talk like that when you got that creepy grin on your face. I need to see her. I need to get to a TV. I need to see the real Princess Piggles. What's he mean, real? She's a cartoon character. But now might be a bad time to bring that up. Listen, don't get so upset. I'm sure you'll see her again really soon. You'll see your... What was it? Something Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess? Something Angel? Something Angel? How dare you insult the princess like that! Say her name right, swine! Her official name, what was it again? Demon Angel? Now I remember. The full title is Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, right? It's actually Demon Angel Star Pretty Pudgy Princess, to be precise. You left out the star, but I suppose I'll let that slide. Thanks. But geez, Hifumi, you really love that anime, huh? Of course. She's my guiding angel. She opened my eyes to life. Very sad. Before her, I didn't have a single friend. I was just a mild-mannered boy who liked to draw. I heard everything I touched. I was a model young lad who fell to the dark side. For example, sometimes a nicey-nice type girl would come try to talk to me, right? You know, be nice to the weird dorky kid. And I'd scream at her, You're such a hypocrite! I'd just yell right in her face and make her cry. Man, I loved doing that. That's awful. He probably traumatized that poor girl. What the shit? But by total chance, I happened to catch an episode of Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess one day. At first, I felt nothing but contempt for it. I thought it was just another magical girl anime. However, after that, she came to me in my dreams. Your dreams? I dreamed that I went on date after lovely date with Princess Pickles. It was so much fun. When I woke up and realized it was a dream, I got depressed, but I also realized it was in love. I wanted to experience that sensation again, so I started buying all the Princess Pickle stuff I could. However, Unfortunately, in the show itself, the princess never falls in love. 
so as much as I wanted to, I never got to see her face filled with love the way I did in my dream. <laughs> it's like the face she made when she was in love was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. So filled to the brim with my overflowing affection for the princess, I decided to draw that face myself. I was consumed with passion, and I finished one Princess Pickles project after another. I was so happy with the results, I decided to put it up on my personal website just to see what happened. And it was an instant success. That was the moment I was reborn as a true fanfic creator. So that's why, huh? I was so happy. I had no idea there were other people on the planet who'd felt the same things I had. I can't thank her, I know that. So instead, I'll ball up all my love and affection and use it to do incredibly embarrassing things to her. I think he missed the mark. By a mile. But maybe I'm better off for hearing what he had to say. I think I understand him a little better now. She's still developing as a woman, you know. And I can keep developing her in all sorts of ways. And maybe understanding him just a little better is good enough. Delusion. We, we unlocked Delusion. Oh, brother. This fucking guy. Please just be over. Please be the last time. I don't want to talk to you anymore. While Byakuya may be a dickhead, at least I don't get tired talking to him. Alright, Ifumi, what else do you like? So, my last option here is something called Tips and Tips. Do I have that? No. Um, so what else would he like? What else would he like? I don't fucking know. Adorable reactions collection? Okay. Hi there, Mr. Nagi. It's kind of embarrassing, but there was something I was hoping to talk to you about. I'll be waiting in my room. Come as soon as you can. Good. Oh lord, his room. His room. Oh, Godzilla. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Nagi, to my secret flower garden. So, what did you want to talk about? Is it about Princess Piggles again? Piggles? No! Who cares about her? What do you mean, who cares? I thought you cared. Like, a lot. Oh, well, maybe I misspoke. It's just that I don't have room to think about her right now. See, I was kind of starting to think about... Just maybe... Creating something original. Original? It's actually been on the back of my mind the whole time I've been doing fanfic. Fanfic is amazing, don't get me wrong. It's a way to connect to people to a shared dream, so to speak. But I think I have more to offer. I'm ready for the challenge of creating that dream myself. I was thinking, if I could create something that might save someone the way the princess saved me, I want to create a masterpiece that will astound a mainstream audience. I only watch anime on the weekend, and I only really know the most popular comics. I want to try and make something that's the same reach as stuff like that. I guess what I really want to do is create something that other people will want to make fanfic of. Of course, I'll still keep making fanfic myself. That's my life's work, after all. But if that can coexist alongside original work, that's like the best of both worlds. So that's your dream? A dream? When you put it like that. Stop, you're embarrassing me. But having a dream to work toward is really nice. I'll be cheering you on. In private. <laughs> no, Mr. Naegi. In private is unacceptable. Huh? Yes, I want you to become my assistant. That's right. A legendary assistant slash historian. Oh man, how cool is that? You'll be my like my own personal narrator. Long ago, there was a man named Tifumi Yamada. He was an incredibly famous fanfic creator. His grandpa went up to the mountain to cut and cut and cut and cut. <laughs> 
His grandma spent her days washing clothes, washing pants, washing all kinds of stuff. Where the fuck are you going with this? Here comes a rare giant peach down the river. Grab it! Sell it to the highest bidder! This is not fucking Momotaro! Tefumi? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I just got a little carried away in my latest plot. That's what that was? <laughs> anyway, I'll be counting on you to give the world a play-by-play -play as I ascend into godhood. Um, I mean, if I'm successful. I'll be counting on your unique perspective as my friend. I'm glad I got to learn about Hifumi's dreams. This... Jesus. Please tell me he doesn't put on the costume. Please. Please tell me he doesn't put on the fucking costume. <sighs> Where did he get the bed sheets and pillow and Dakimakura? Where did he get all of his bullshit? I forgot. I've come to understand Hifumi. Never again. Never. Fucking again. I just, uh, Ifumi just makes me tired. He makes me very, very tired. Right, can I make anything? Ooh. Oh yeah. Now who gets it? Uh, Makoto. All right, I think this is about where we're gonna end our first playthrough level-wise. Which, you know, not bad, not bad. We got seven and mostly fives in collecting, and we got a six and an eight and a five in cleaning. You know, pretty all right. All right, and I think with that, we're gonna end it there. We're so, so very close to finally ending the first playthrough of school mode. But don't worry, you won't have to sit through the other playthroughs of school mode. I'll just get the endings, and then we'll be done. Alright, I've been player one, and next time, we've got one little dickhead to talk to. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.